The Beast versus The Streak. No shit. Gee, I wonder who that we. Undertaker, Brock Lesnar. Casket match? No. Is it? No. No? <laughs> Is that because of the casket on I, Raw? I, I, oh. I, yeah. No, that was no? just... That, that was, was just, just He was just yeah. fucking with yeah. him, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which, which was actually really unfortunate, the way that they did the camera cuts. For you that. saw and him crawl under. Because you saw the yeah. apron moving, and it's like, ah, Jesus, those were Brock bad. Brock Lesnar went over the top rope onto that casket, man. He almost freaking killed himself. He did. He, <laughs> he like landed on his he head. He goes for broke, right? When he does true. spots, he, he goes for broke. It's he does, It's true. Yeah. He's just like, all right, screw it. I'm, 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 I'm going to make this look good. Which, you know what? That's a props to Brock Lesnar. Yep. I don't like him as a wrestler. I didn't like him as an MMA star. I, you know, probably if I met him, wouldn't like him as a person. But... Well, he was arguably one of the most overrated UFC oh, champions. God. God, in history. Yeah. But you I, gotta I give him... for him. I, I, I liked it because he went. He was the guy that nobody wanted in there because he come from wrestling. But he no, went in there fair. and he proved that he could do it. It's true. Yeah, yeah. that's it's fair. Like yeah, <laughs> to an ankle lock. To an ankle. Yeah, exactly. Kurt Angle could have beat him. Yeah, but you get, like, he got the ankle lock, but he was being smart because he didn't want to withstand it and hurt himself. Well, and then, exactly. You know, yeah. Fuck his career. Well, yeah. Because, so he because it, like right away, it's true. We're getting into MMA bit. talk here a little yeah. bit, but like Frank Mir has a history of breaking bones. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Mir is like, you're either going to tap to this, or I'm going to break your fucking ankle. Well, so like, could be the testosterone therapy. He got his though. payback. It could be. Yeah, yeah. He got his payback exactly, making him eat some of those fucking lunch mon- boxes, fucking monkey fists <laughs> that he's got. Like it's ridiculous. Um. All right, folks. The, the streak. The streak. The streak sits at 21 and 0. And we ask the question every year. The first part of the question: Should the streak ever? be broken we're not yes. even talking about this year should the streak ever be broken rodney says yes yep i'm on it yeah i was actually hoping last year and it's well i'm uh, you know a definitely um a huge cm punk fan okay but um i it's got to be broken he's got to pass that torch and i think it's this year and the reason i think it's this year is because when paul Heyman came out to the ring um, last week on Raw, and Brock Lesnar stopped him from talking. Right. What he was saying is that he was basically giving props to The Undertaker. Mm-hmm. You've won 21 consecutive matches at WrestleMania. Nobody right. will ever be able to say that. Right. You know, they're not going to mm-hmm. invest that time to do that again. No, likely not. So he was basically giving props and then saying, you know, not even my beast Brock Lesnar can ever say that, you know, he's mm-hmm. got a streak, but he is going to beat the streak, and I believe he is. I don't think uh, WWE will gain anything given the streak to Brock Lesnar. What they should do is give it to, like, an up-and-comer that they know is going to be, you know, a good star. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they give it to Roman Reigns. I agree, Reigns. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I beat yeah. the Undertaker's streak. <laughs> yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. But on that same note, if they do that to an up and comer, where the fuck do you go after that? There's nowhere you can go. So exactly. Well, so true. if you do it to an up and comer, the rest is irrelevant after that because he was the first man to beat the Undertaker's streak. Hmm. So what if he's the fucking WWE champion now? He beat the streak. Yeah. But I yeah, just can't see them fair. giving it to Lesnar because Lesnar doesn't need that accolade on he, his career. He doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't need him. it, but you got to think, um, if you're Mark Calloway, you want somebody that isn't afraid of anybody mm-hmm. generally, and everybody does consider to be like one of the most dangerous people in all of professional wrestling, why would you not want somebody who everybody considers to be the be all and end all of like a, a living animal in the ring, the right. beast? Mm-hmm. Why would you not want him to be the one to end it for you? You know, that's I fair. just think maybe it's Mark's Mark's decision himself, and in you know, that's my take on it. Okay, all these pressuring questions. I know <laughs> it's tough, um, man. We don't, no. we don't we don't give you any freebies. No. I think the streak is something that means a lot to the hardcore wrestling fans like us. Mm-hmm. It's something that we all hold on to. Yep. And honestly, I don't know if I'm ever going to be satisfied with someone ending the streak. I think there there are very few... It's, it's so legendary. Yeah. It's just like, it's that thing that no one should ever be able to touch, if you ask me. There are very few, well, A, there are very few big matches left for The Undertaker at this yep. point. There, there are very few. I mean, the one big one that still sits there is Undertaker John Cena. 
Like that's that's, that's true. That's the big. That's the if, match that if you. If John Cena ended the streak, uh, the internet wrestling community. That's would true. Definitely you, you'll have mass suicide. The, God. Yeah, the the <laughs> uh, the IWC would definitely lose their collective shit. People hanging themselves with John Cena armbands and shit. That's true. <laughs> no. No, no one would survive because the arena would just get destroyed and everyone would just be dead. It's true. <laughs> it's fa- fair enough. Um, but I, I'm, I'm of the same opinion. I, I feel like the, the streak is something, uh, you know, all sort of platitudes aside. I, I do think the streak is something special in wrestling, and I don't, I don't necessarily think that there is a right answer as to who should take it. The only problem with that is you only get one shot at it. That's right. It's true. Right. So, like, if you if you if you screw it up, if you give it to the wrong person, you don't get a do over. Like, true. it's like the streak's done. But yeah. If, if they end the streak, well, then my Blu-ray is null and void. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's fair. Um, if if they were going to give it to someone, <sighs> I don't like. I guess this is the problem. Like, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Who you give it to? I think I, I like. <laughs> I like. I like the idea of giving it to someone who is young and you know is going to be in the business for a long time yet, who respects the business and yeah. and and someone who knows what it is to be given that, like get to know what a gift that is. But I don't necessarily think that there is someone who should, who should you know who should lose who should get it. Um. Let's assume for a second that the streak lives. Let's assume for a second that Undertaker beats Lesnar. Yeah. Who's the next person to challenge it? Who's the next they're, they're person? They're talking Sting on the internet because they, they confirmed that he signed a WWE contract. Did they finally confirm yeah, that he it's signed? it's like uh, one match, retire. <laughs> Fair enough. So, one match, retire, put wow. him in the Hall of Fame. That yeah. makes yeah. sense. I, I can see Sting. You think Sting could, could be the next it's, one? It's what? It, yeah, but that's going to take a lot of credibility away from The Undertaker. If you bring in somebody who's never fought in a WWE ring, the first match in and they beat The Undertaker for the streak. I, I didn't even want to talk. I don't say beat The Undertaker. Yeah, not beat. No? But just, no. just, but just, just who, who just would, just, if, yeah. if the streak lives, who would be the next guy to okay. challenge? So I, I guess your so. most enigmatic WCW guy I, versus your most enigmatic WWF I, guy. See, I, okay. I look at it differently. Uh, I, I, we all want to see the match happen. It would be the biggest thing to ever happen to the industry. Right. It would. It, it would. It would be among it because you have you have the icon of WCW, and, and arguably the icon of yeah. WWE. And here, here's where I'm going to go with this. Some people are going to disagree with me. Shoot. If the streak ends, mm-hmm. and if let's say let's say next year Sting versus Undertaker happens, and Sting wins. I don't think I'd be ultra disappointed because to me, Sting is WCW. He, right. was, he was the greatest talent they ever had. He was pretty much yep. the equivalent of The Undertaker to WCW. He was their version yep. of The Undertaker. Thanks to the NWO. Yes. yes. He, well, yeah. He, he, was, he was made that way, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I don't know. Sting to me is just so legendary that if he, ended, if he was the one to end the streak, I'd be, I think I'd actually not be disappointed. Okay. Fair enough. But I still don't want the streak to end. No, fair, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. And, Preface and, that by saying, like, this is worst case, but yeah. Yeah. And to me, the, the streak will never end. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this before. We have a yeah. picture going around on the internet where we meet on it. Yes, that's true. And yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's just like what we talked about before. The character of The Undertaker is going to be passed down. This is what I'm thinking, and this is what I want, because I don't want The Undertaker. I don't want the streak to die. Mm-hmm. You know? So, it's it's just... So, you're thinking Undertaker beats Brock Lesnar. Yeah. You're thinking next year, maybe Sting. Undertaker maybe wins again. Yeah. Last match, done. Now you're thinking he passes the torch on to somebody else, and then next WrestleMania, it's The Undertaker, only it's a new Undertaker, it, and the streak continues. It's a new Undertaker. What we were talking about before, and I think we were off the air when we pitched this idea to each other. Maybe. At the end of the match, Undertaker is so worn out, and he kind of like looks up, and the whole like arena goes pitch black we talked about this last time i yeah, was on the show a little like bit i think i think it was after yeah this was actually talking about like that. i was on last yeah time. exactly common topic 
lightning going everywhere down to the ring and it's just like pitch black yeah. and lights come back on and you see like the urn sitting there and the new undertakers there not the old one it's just kind of something down. like uh what happened at royal rumble 94 when he got lost in the casket match yes. he disintegrated and on then the titan he just throne. like yeah he some, some epic like up. that happens yeah. but yeah. like Fair enough. Said, someone news there which a, a lot of people now uh revisionist wrestling history is just like that was pretty corny but you know, you can. That was you can, epic you when can, it happened, man. I shit myself. Like, oh God, man. I'm scared to death. Yeah. You can <laughs> you can play with the Undertaker stuff that way because it is the greatest gimmick in the yeah. history of wrestling. So you can even even in a, if you're trying to make it a more reality based program, you can still play with the Undertaker stuff a little bit. So, all right, here's the big question, folks: Beast versus the Streak. Who you got? I'm I'm gonna have to say, and you guys are all gonna disagree, but I'm gonna say the beast is gonna end the streak this year. Wow! And I think it's probably gonna be. It might even be a uh, maybe a, a shoe off to another guy. Maybe um, I don't know. Maybe another Paul Heyman guy might do a little run in and mm-hmm. and cause uh, cause the the uh, streak to be lost. I don't know. That's my prediction, though. Okay, all right, fair enough. I like. I think I, we all know who I'm talking about. I kind of, yeah. I kind of like. I kind of like the where internet. You're going with the that. internet would literally implode on itself. People are like, holy yeah. fuck, this wasn't kayfabe. Yeah. Or sorry, hey, holy fuck, this was kayfabe. Yeah, this was kayfabe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Say what you want; those guys are mad. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Justin, I'm gonna go with the Undertaker, but I'm, I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of moments where. It's going to be damn close to yeah. Brock wins. Just to... it, I hope there is. I hope that they put on a similar match with the dr- the drama like the Shawn Michaels match and stuff. Yeah. A lot of near falls. Mm. Like, you know, three or four fucking F5s and shit yeah. and stuff. And, yeah. you know, but can really the brutal. handle that with his two new hips? You know, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Does he really have two new hips? Yeah, he got two. He does. He, he, he does. He, you know, he's only 45 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That. That's sad. Fair enough. Looks like he's 82. <laughs> but Getting one thing I do bit. know, um, with like Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, Undertaker has a wrestling ring in his garage, and he would he would fly Michaels down, and they would spend a week choreographing the whole match, yeah. exactly yep. what to do. Brock Lesnar would not agree to go to his house for a week. He said he'd go for a day, maybe two, and that's it. So I don't think you're going to see his high-quality <sighs> match because Brock's a dick. Well, and that's another reason why I've always said I don't like Brock Lesnar. Because... Right. Unless he's getting paid extensively to do something, he doesn't give a shit. Right. Yeah, that that always kind of does seem to be his Achilles. Yeah. yeah. Cody. Undertaker. But now, like, I agree with you guys. I want to see a lot of dramatic moments. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I'm going to have to take a, a, a clean pair of underwear. Yeah. <laughs> hide, it, hide it under false, the coach. False, false finishes um, like a boss. You know, yeah. I think it'd be cool what that happened. Brock puts him in the Kimura lock and, like, Breaks his arm, right? But Undertaker doesn't tap. Oh, nice! You know how awesome that be? Be like everyone's like, "Oh my god, his arm's yeah. broke!" But he's there. He's like, "Ah, one arm, <laughs> one one arm tombstone." That actually, well, Brock's yeah, a maybe, little maybe too heavy for that. Went. I think. Yeah, I think Brock's probably a shade, <laughs> and he's on not the heavy that side. good at assisting other people's moves, so no, I don't think he true. can pull that off. Well, not just that he's big, just all the work that the Undertaker's had done to him, like surgically. Yeah, you know, he was off for all that time, replaced his hips. You put a lot of weight, like trying to pick Brock up to yep. do a tombstone and hold him. It's true. Like, are we going to see? Gotta, you know, he's coming down with more force too. So. Are we going to see the dive? I no, I would. No, because he he didn't do it last year. Uh, did did Heyman run in the way when he tried to do yeah. it? And st- yeah, yeah, he, he did. Won't yeah. see it anymore. So we probably I doubt we'll see that again. Although I fucking love that dive. Yeah, pretty, that was a good great. way to mask it. Having Paul Heyman run in front, yeah. though. Maybe That's they'll bring true. in Sin Cara's trampoline, try to hide it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hide it literally in the ring. <laughs> That'd be fucking weird, <laughs> Nick. Uh, I'm I'm Undertaker all the way. Yeah. Fair enough. Just what? What's there more to say? Yeah, I don't like Brock Lesnar. Well, no, that's true. You're you're you are not a Brock fan. No. Um, I got I, I gotta I gotta go take her too. I gotta I gotta go I gotta go with the heart. The head the head might say something a little bit different, but you know I gotta I gotta go with the heart. And the heart is the heart is that the streak lives to twenty two and zero. <laughs> All right, folks. Here we go. Triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Randy Orton, who of course holds the titles, versus Batista, who of course won the Royal Rumble, versus oh yeah, sorry, versus Bautista, who won the Royal Rumble, 
versus deal with it. Yeah, deal with <laughs> it. Versus, of course, to be determined, the winner of the Daniel Bryan versus Triple H match. Uh, <laughs> again, I put my first note here. No matter who wins between Bryan and Triple H, thank God this is not just Orton Batista one on one. Could that have potentially been the worst Mania main event ever, all things considered? And I honestly think it. Could I think have it would have been. Yeah, Batista don't have it in him anymore. Like you know, the matches that he's had with people, they absolutely suck. Yeah, they have. They have. They haven't been the greatest. And I've always been a fan of Batista's in ring. I think he was. You know, a very agile big man, and he's so strong. But uh, yeah, being away, he was away from the ring for a little more than well, it was it was about four about years. four years, and 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 it's it showed in yeah. uh, in the and his last few matches, even before he left, weren't great because there was that hardcore bu- not hardcore bullshit, but like hardcore not overly technical matches with John Cena. Like there was like yeah. the. The I quit matches and and things like that. So like not, they don't he doesn't really get to showcase the the talent that he does have. Yeah. So so like you know he has he hasn't been great for a while. Um, I wanted to toss this out. Is there any good avenue in your mind for Orton to retain the title? Good avenue. Like like is is there a good <laughs> is there a way in your mind that like Orton could retain the title and you're just like oh that's. Uh, yeah, all right, that makes sense. I would rather see Orton retain it than to see Batista take it if it was a one-on-one match. Right. Agreed. Um, Fair enough. 100% agreed. Yeah, I, yep. I don't know. Really, the only way I see um, saving WrestleMania 30's main event is to have Daniel Bryan in it and mm-hmm. to have him win the title. That's right. basically the only way possibly you could save that main event. Cut and dry. It's black and white. Fair enough. For me, anyway. Right. That makes sense. Uh, anybody else on that before we uh, before we move on to our our sub who you got? There's this one. This one's the format of this one's a little bit different. Apparently not. All right, stop. <laughs> I guess I summed that up. I eh? guess so. Sorry, fellas. No, no stop. worries. No worries. Um, assume for a moment that Triple H beats Daniel Bryan. So we assume that Triple H is the third member of the Triple Threat. In your opinion. Would a Triple H as corporate champion storyline be interesting to you? Like, would it, it would it have like would it have legs for you and for an audience? Depends on where they went with it, I guess. Definitely depends on where they went oh, with yeah. it. Yeah. So, like, you wouldn't you wouldn't immediately just be like, ah, oh, fuck this. You'd at least you'd at least I'd give it a chance. Give it a chance, kind of thing. I'd give it a chance as long as the next night on Raw he wasn't defending against Orton and Batista again, or yeah. they right away said, oh, well, on the next pay per view we've got a triple threat match, right? Yeah, with Triple it. H, Dave fucking Batista, and <laughs> Randy. <laughs> I've got so much talent, I you know shit excellence. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. See, he doesn't even piss excellence. He no, has he concentrated, shits it. That's, concentrated excellence. That's a lot shit. of stinky excellence. It's <laughs> just, enough. it's you know what? It's too bad that his character lacks, though. As the legend killer, Randy Orton was one of my favorites back in the day. Yeah. During the evolution time when he was coming up through, and I don't know if he got cocky or complacent or what happened, but, man, he just lost it. He lost me years ago. I haven't given a shit about a Randy Orton match in, yeah. like, five years. Every, I think he got to the point where, like, everybody was telling him how great he was and how great his future was going to be, and I think he bought into it. Yeah. And, and then and then he, he did get complacent, I think. so. I think that's probably a good quote for his DVD in ten years. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I got complacent. Yeah. I bought into everybody telling me how great I was going to be, and... Now I'm addicted to meth. <laughs> now, I'm addicted to, now I'm addicted to meth and I'm dating China. Oh! Uh, <laughs> he's only got one more go, though. He's been, what, suspended twice. And yeah. He gets suspended again, and he's done. Yeah. Is this Orton? Yeah. yeah. Suspended for what? Uh, wellness. Wellness yeah. policy, being on drugs. Wellness. Yeah, which, which drugs? Is it the ones that keep jacking him up every time he comes back? I think so. I I'm amazed so. that I'm amazed that they're still getting away with this. The whole steroids and wrestling. It's thing, true. You know? It's crazy. There's yeah. just they they found they found ways to pass the test. Yeah, there's alternatives, right? And make but it make it look natural. And just... All right. So now assume for a moment that Brian beats Triple H. So then Brian's the third member in the match. Can this storyline with Daniel Bryan and like the Authority and everything like that? Can it possibly sustain yet another screw job no. against Brian? That would ruin it. That would ruin it for me. And that, uh, how many times can you do it? Right. You've already yeah. done it. What? Three times. Yeah. Three times. Four. Yeah. Something like that. So. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> fair enough. Cody gets. Cody, the take the floor. <laughs> Ramped up. Uh, uh, 
if they if they screwed him over again, it wouldn't work. If they screwed him over at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. uh, just so we could have him win the title at a minor pay per view, like over the limit or whatever, that just would not. Fair enough. No, no. We gave Daniel Bryan his over the limit moment. Uh, fair enough. Um, so, so we think like if Bryan gets into the match, the storyline has to kind of evolve from like. It gets back into the whole chasing the title thing. Now it's not about the authority anymore. Now it goes back to that. I'm the title is now my focus again. Not kind of getting revenge on these guys. Fair enough. Which would be nice. They they've been doing this whole authority thing a little bit too much. A, a, a bit. It's gotten a little pervasive. It, it has. Yeah. So who you got is being done in two parts. Okay. If Triple H beats Brian, who you got in the triple threat match? We'll start with Justin. I don't want to say it, but probably Batista, because I know that's the only reason he came back. So they were probably like, you know, we'll give you the title. Mm-hmm. But then this whole Daniel Bryan thing took off. So, Fair so it's hard to say. But I'm going to say if Triple H wins, they're not going to give it to Triple H. It'll go to Batista. All right. Cody. I'm going to say I, I could actually see them being cynical enough to have Triple H take the title. like. I, I just with WWE anything's possible now. I, it's true. I, it, it, I would it wouldn't put it past them to to do it. Oops. If Triple H goes into the main event, yep, I want Orton to retain. Interesting. I actually I wouldn't. Say, I'd, have I'd want Orton to retain if Triple H went in. Yeah, right. Because Bautista, no, <laughs> no. If yeah. if if Triple H is the third man in the match, Triple H is leaving with the belt. Uh, as far as far as I as far as I can see, Batista's gonna get the belt at some point because again <laughs> he's signed his contract as we've said for two years. And so over he's, the limit, he's getting his belt at some point, <laughs> and maybe yeah, at over the limit. Give him his over the limit moment. Maybe he doesn't get it till SummerSlam, but he gets it. But I I think if if Triple H ends up being the third man in the match, I think Triple H is the one that ends up leaving with the belt. It's a tough call. It really is. It is. You know, that's one of them ones that you you look at the lesser of the three evils. And that was just what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and and what it really boils down to for me is is I'm going to go with Stevenson on this one. I'm going to say Orton to retain. And I think if they go that way, um, I think Triple H has been pushing Orton so much mm-hmm. that I really think you're going to see a side of of him come out that we haven't seen in a long time. And maybe we'll see a punt kick or two. I'm just nice. gonna say that. I can see you know, Triple H getting the punt yeah, kick. Yeah, nice. I know it was outlawed, but I maybe you're gonna see well, it. You know, well, didn't he? Didn't he go for it once? He uh, went for it. Yeah, he went for it and didn't actually connect. Yeah, but he, he he actually went for it. Yeah, he got it that's on Big Show. That's how he beat Big Show. Remember? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh he did. Right. Boom! Oh. Mind blown. Oh. Good. Oh. Blown. Drop, Good job, Kurt. Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe bomb. Yeah, but I think uh, I think Orton would I think Orton would retain it myself. Fair enough. Yeah. So other way around, if Brian beats Triple H, who you got? Absolutely, Daniel Bryan. Right. It, they'd be stupid not. One hundred percent, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan again. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Clean sweep. <laughs> if Bryan is so as far as I'm concerned, whoever wins that match between Triple H and Daniel Bryan is leaving with the belt. Yeah. Cuz I it, if if Triple H gets in that's who I think if Bryan wins it's that's good, who I think so. It's a good prediction. It's the a good American way to see. Dragon will live. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> All right. Last question of the night, folks. We're going to get us out of here on this one and this is going to make you so happy. Does CM Punk make a surprise return at WrestleMania 30 in any context, in any match? Yeah, definitely. You think definitely. So? It's I... my wild card prediction. It's happening. And the reason I, I, I think it's happening is because it's been so goddamn hush hush. His right. Twitter account went dead. It's totally Everything yeah. has gone dead. You're not seeing him at sports games and stuff like that. You did see him on The Talking Dead. Mm-hmm. Um,. Where they still had the hashtag at CM Punk, right? If he wasn't going to be involved in it anymore, he would have changed that, right? Or canceled that, you know. Mm-hmm. He's still on the roster on, on the on, on, the, web, on the website, yeah, yeah. You know, they're still using him every once in a while. You're gonna see, you see him in clips for promotional things. Um, I really think 
if it's if it would either be the main event, maybe if Triple H won, mm-hmm. and in the main event, maybe you see CM Punk come through the crowd, take Triple H out of it, and then Orton gets the victory. Or other than that, uh, if Daniel Bryan wins, maybe you see him either help Daniel Bryan to finally get one of them guys through, right. or maybe you see him come in and help Brock take out Taker, or vice versa, because nice. we know him and Heyman weren't that's jiving. True. So true. maybe that's how uh, Taker beats Brock. Who knows? Oh, it's a possibility. And yes, you did make me very happy with that there one. There you go. Thank you. Fair <laughs> enough. I tossed that one on there for you. Thanks, buddy. I, I even put you as the first one to ask about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, Pre- right appreciate there. that. I absolutely hope so. Yeah. Definitely. Right on. And that's, yeah, that, that, that's kind of where I sit, too, is like, I hope it happens, because I think there are a lot of good ways that you could do it. Yeah. Cody? I'm hoping CM Punk shows up at WrestleMania, and he hasn't been future endeavored. No. That's it's why true. I think he's still taking time off. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Here, that's oh, that's yes. true. He looked like he, he was getting some sleep. He had <laughs> injuries after injuries after injuries yeah. built up. His knees, his ankles, his feet, his elbows, everything. Exactly. He was just wore the fuck out. CM Punk likes to be the star of the show. We all know that. It's true. And I guarantee you, he really lobbied to be... Well, he wants to be a big part of WrestleMania 30. He wants to make mm-hmm. things interesting. Yep. I can see him showing up. Yeah. I, right I really can. Nick? I'm split on this. Yeah. It's like you can see good ways for it to happen, but you don't know that it's gonna yeah. kind of thing. And I... It, it will be a... Very big letdown if he wasn't mm-hmm. in some way connected, right? Uh, with uh, w- with uh, WrestleMania 30. That being said, we've seen this before with like Stone Cold Steve Austin, who right. got pissed off with the company and left. And mm-hmm. like uh, Rodney said, uh, CM Punk's like the his uh. Profile is still up on WWE. Yeah, but technically his contract is not up yet. No, that's true. He's he's not technically July, outside of the company yet. He's just on sabbatical. Right. Exactly. Sa- says Vince McMahon. Yeah. True enough. So but you would assume if he walked out on the company and walked out on his contract that they would be all over getting them, getting him the fuck off the merchandise, right. and things like that. But his stuff um, is all still there. Which they you would think they would because history has shown us that when somebody fucks with the McMahons, you disappear. Yeah. Not in that way, but out of the limelight. <laughs> you really right. do. Yeah. So if he looked at Triple H and said, if you let Batista win the Rumble, which is what I've heard was what happened, mm-hmm. he said, I'm going to fucking walk out. And well, Kane eliminated him and he walked out. Nobody knows but creative. It's true. Doom Sparrow Sparrow, while I breathe, I hope. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed he shows up. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going... What the hell was that? What? <laughs> what the hell was that? Whoa, 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 what? Do I, do I, Doom Sparrow Sparrow? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god, holy it's, crap, it's what am I doing? It's time for my hypothetical yes, yes, WrestleMania yes, yes. prediction. Jeez, sorry, I almost... You're, you're all cut probably your... going to roll your eyes at this. I almost, I almost cut Cody's balls off there, sorry. <laughs> I'm, think, I'm thinking about a Sweet Chin music from here, so watch what <laughs> oh, you no, say. No, actually, no. There, there's like a 1% chance this will happen. Get right. that camera if, rolling. If, 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 this, if this happened, this would be probably the greatest ending of WrestleMania history. Let's say Triple H beats Daniel Bryan. Okay. Triple H goes into that triple threat match and he wins the title. Okay. Shits on all the wrestling fans. Everyone's pissed. He's in the ring with Stephanie. Let's say the uh, Kane and the Outlaws come out. They're all right. celebrating in the ring. We're all freaking red in the face. First thing, the lights go out. The lights come back on. Sting is standing in the ring with his bat. Clears out the house. Dr- uh, drills Triple H in the stomach with the bat. Right. Scorpion death drop. They could do a corporate storyline. That's how they could bring Sting in to make him really effective. Oh. Triple, H, actually like, is Triple H is the big guy yeah. now. He's got the belt. He's got all the power. Mm-hmm. Sting could be the guy that rallies the WWE. Just like Hulk Hogan. Just like when he went versus the NWO. Yeah. yeah. It's the same kind of storyline, which we know they like to recycle storylines. Yeah, true uh, enough. But I'm, just, I'm so high on this now. Nice. We can tell. You look yeah. like you're high. <laughs> I like it. You, you look yeah. like you are pumped about this. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, it's, this is the closest it's ever been to Sting being signed. It's true. I'm just, every night I watch it, I'm just expecting something to happen. Like, I it's think that would be the, the 30th anniversary. Have that big exclamation point <laughs> on the end of the show. Nice. 
Here's like my it. hypothetical prediction. It right works. on. Right on. It works. Folks, for the last two hours, you have listened to us talk shop, not only about WrestleMania 30, but about WWE as a whole, including Scooby-Doo's WrestleMania. Uh, So we have given you the best that we can possibly give you over the last two hours. I want to thank the three of you guys so much for coming on and doing this. Again, it's the biggest production we've ever done. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thank you very much. It's It's been been super, super fun. It's been an honor to be here. Absolutely. We're going to get it to be at this place here, which may or may not be your mother's basement. Uh, so, yeah, we, uh, it, was, it was awesome. I'm so glad that we got a chance to do this. And, uh, again, WrestleMania 30 is in, again, we said it was eight days, isn't it? Because it's yeah, next weekend. Eight days. Eight days. Make 100% yeah. sure you see that by any means necessary. So that's going to be it. Episode 22 of the Last Fan Standing Podcast. It's in the books. The biggest and best one, I argue, that we have ever done. We're going to be hitting you next week with No Holds Barred with the story of how this podcast came <laughs> together because it is indeed a clusterfuck. So we will see everybody next week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks once again to the boys, the founding fathers of TCW Smart Mark Alley, and we will catch you again next week. <laughs>